Okay, so I finished this city render a few days ago, and I want to do a quick breakdown of this one. There's two main things I want to cover. One is the creation of the actual buildings and a couple of techniques to make that a lot easier because I used to really struggle with that. So I'll show you how I set up the window materials and the glass and just getting the scale and all that. The second thing I want to go over is all of the neon signs and emissive craziness going on everywhere. So I just want to give you some tips and tricks and, and just show you the materials and uh, just give you everything I can to make that part as easy as possible because that's another thing that I used to really struggle with with these renders was how do you get all these signs everywhere because it seems like a lot of work to just make them all one by one. Uh, so I'll show you how I'm dealing with that and making it as easy as possible as well. Okay, so let's start with the buildings here. Uh, before that, you can see right now the viewport is quite laggy. There's two things I'm going to turn off here to just make this run faster. So quick little tip here. I'm using VDBs, which I normally don't do, but in this case, I'm going to turn that off for the viewport and just leave it on for the render. The second thing I'm going to do is actually go to the volume. So just the volume cube that's over the whole scene. I'm going to take that off in the viewport as well. So I'm going to turn off the main volume in the scene as well. And that's just also going to make it run faster in the viewport. There's actually two volumes in here. Just a quick tip as well. This one is actually uh, not volume. It's actually a emissive cube. This is just a principled volume with the density actually turned all the way to zero. So there is no real volume. What we're using is the emission of this principled volume here, the emission strength. That is being controlled by a gradient texture running through a color ramp set to B spline just to make it softer. Map range to set the maximum density way, way lower, um, or maximum strength rather. That goes into the emission strength on this principled volume, and then you just set the color to whatever your color you want. And then you can, by, by default, it's going to be rotated all weird. You could just rotate the cube instead of like messing around with the gradient and doing all that. Just rotate the cube, and then that gives you a really nice upwards emissive uh, atmosphere that you can see is just going to be a really nice thing to put in a render like this. And it's just it's just nice to have like upward glow in the city. It just adds a lot of life and makes it feel more just full and dense. So I like to have that in there. Just complement all the neon signs well as well. Okay, so let's talk about the buildings here. Let's uh, let's just go over the the main structure here. I'm gonna take this and just isolate this for a second, just to break this down. So a lot of these buildings were made with this technique here, which I'll show you. Which is there's two layers. Um, there is an outside layer, which is a glass material, and then it's not actually glass. I'll show you what it is in a second. Then there's an inside material, which is the emissive material. So let me go over this first. Um, I'll go to render view over here, just to have this kind of isolated on its own. I'm going to go to the world settings as well, the world shader editor, and I'm just going to plug in a background and make it bright just so you can really see what's going on here. Okay, so I've basically just modeled a very simple little structure. There's some more complicated stuff going on here with these trim pieces, but really it's just, if I just duplicate this out, it's just this. It's uh, if I just go to a solid view, turn off the texture view. It's uh, it's just a pretty simple cubic building thing. It's just an upward stretched cube with some extrusions going outward, and it's nothing like too crazy, right? Pretty simple building. So all of the details coming from these two materials, which I'll break down right now. So let's talk about the first one, which is the inner building window material, which is this you can see right here. So what this is, um, it's actually just an image of building windows like you can see here. This one is uh, I actually just used AI to make this building window image here, but you can find stock photos that look similar to this, uh, whether it's just uh, the picture directly of a side of a building or just kind of a picture of a city in general that you can zoom into one building in particular that also works. Or you can use AI to make them like I've done here. I can link this exact one below if you want to use this one. Um, and then another way to do it is just go downtown to whatever city you live in and just take a picture of some buildings and make your own texture. So yeah, I just used AI to make a texture like this. I don't really have a problem with doing that for something like this. It makes it just a lot easier to work with. Okay, so what that's doing, this image here is running into two places. One is One is the emission strength and one is the emission color. So let's go over the color. We're taking this image. I'm just darkening it a little bit. This is all kind of personal to whatever render you're making. So just customize this to whatever you want. So I'm just kind of ramping up the contrast a little bit and cutting out some of the darker areas. 
with that curves node and then I'm just desaturating it a little bit with this hue saturation node. So I'm just pulling the saturation down a bit. So then that is it's basically just running straight into the emission color on this uh, texture here. I've also made the base color black just so that it's not reflecting a bunch of white light. So that's pulled all the way down. Um, and then this same image here is also running through these nodes here into the emission strength. So the reason that's working the way it is is because the strength slider is the higher you make it, the brighter it's going to be. The lower you make it closer to zero, the darker it's going to be. When we plug an image into that, the image gets converted into black and white values, black being closer to a value of zero and white being a value of one. Okay, now I'm just using a color ramp and a, a curves layer here just to adjust the exact strength of this. It's not really doing that much. The important thing here is the map range. These values are all on default. The only thing I'm changing here is the two max value. So that's basically saying instead of capping this as a, at a maximum value of one, we're gonna make the maximum value 45. So if I set this to one, that's the default. It's basically just making it brighter. That's all it's doing. And again, you can use a, a math node here and just put that on multiply and put that to the same value. It's gonna do the same thing. Okay, so the second layer is this material right here, which is on top of that. It's kind of this glass material that gets combined with this really nicely so that you get the reflections coming off of that and then also the emissive surface beneath it. So if I just show you in like a darker environment, that's where you're gonna see the, the window lights below it, but also get the reflections like you would an actual building. Okay, so I'm gonna take that layer and let's duplicate that out off to the side as well. I'll just put it over here. So this material is uh, I'm actually using a similar technique, but it's a, a, a picture of a building in the daytime. So this is one from textures.com. I got this when textures.com was a free site. It's no longer free. Again, you can just make one of these with AI if you want, or you can go out and take a picture of a building, or you can go on a stock photo website and just find any side of a building that you can use as a texture. Uh, there's a bunch of ways to get this kind of thing, but just some sort of thing that looks kind of like the side of a building that you can repeat. It doesn't matter if it's repeating too much because it's going to be pretty hidden once you combine it with the other texture. So this is running into the base color of this outside material. And all, all I've done on this is I've just duplicated the mesh and then scaled it up a little bit and then put the window material on the outside one just so that there's a little bit of separation between the two. So that lets you see through it onto the thing that's smaller underneath it. So base color is right there. I'm making it metallic as well. What that's doing is it's just making it more shiny and reflective looking. I didn't make it full though, because it was not reflecting light from the rest of the environment as well as I wanted it to. So that's pulled down a little bit. Roughness is essentially at zero just to make it reflective. And then the interesting thing here is I'm using the alpha, I'm bringing that down a little bit. And that's what's letting the light come from the, the emissive surface below rather than using like a glass material. So I'm not using transmission. I don't like using transmission for actual glass or windows usually, just because it's annoying to work with. It adds way more noise and render time. And it's just a pain in the ass. So by making it metallic and then turning down the alpha, you're kind of getting the best of, uh, it, it's basically metal, but a bit see-through. That's what it is. So that's perfect for a situation like this where you wanna be able to have it reflective like a window, but then also see through it a little bit and not create a whole bunch of noise. Um, this is the perfect shader that I've found. So you can see if I have the alpha on one, we just have a metallic surface now. If I bring down the alpha a little bit, that's the, the reflection of the other building, but just if you look at it head on, bringing down the alpha a little bit just lets you see through to that uh, emissive surface that's below it, right? So that's kind of the perfect one-two combo that I found for buildings like this. Uh, and that's how you get just, it, you can really hide the repetition, especially you can see here, I've split this up into different chunks on the model. And what I've done here is on the emissive surface below, I've just placed that on different parts. Uh, like I've placed these different chunks on different parts of the UV map. So for example, if I just unwrapped this with a, a cube projection and just kind of have this as um, like a default unwrap, you can see it's repeating, you, you can see quite easily that it's repeating, right? You can see the same section being repeated over and over all the way up. What I've done is I've, I've just done a cube, cube projection, but I've just selected different parts of these chunks here. So I'll take like a chunk here, move that to a different part of the UV editor. This one gets moved up here, 
move this one to a different part, move this one to a different part, you can see. So it's uh, when you do it like that and you just move these manually to different sections, you can basically eliminate the repetition of the texture for the most part and get it to a point where it's pretty much not noticeable. And then I didn't even bother doing that for the outside window material because you, you can't even really tell at all. And then you could just add in trim pieces on top of that and you know add as many fancy little details as you want. I added this like wireframe version where it's just duplicated mesh, wireframe modifier, and then make it a little bit emissive. And that's just creating that, uh, that outline around the entire outside of it, just really, really subtle, but adds a nice level of detail as well. I'd recommend getting those materials set up as quickly as possible. And then once you have them, you can just go crazy with whatever building shape you want. So I can put that, um, you know, building window lights material on whatever shape that I have here. So I'll just do that really quick. Let's just uh, turn this up so you can see. So window lights, and then just unwrap that with a cube projection. And then I'll duplicate the mesh scale up the mesh a little bit so it's a little bit uh, on top of the other one like overlapping it on the outside uh, and then i'll just switch that material to uh, i didn't actually name it it's just called material but the outside building window material and then you can just get whatever building shape you want really easily and just go crazy with duplicating that as much as you want and then just adjusting the uv map to uh, get a different pattern on the windows and that's a lot of what is happening in this render. So there's a few other buildings that I've used too. So these are from my free buildings pack, which I'll link below. These ones don't have the emissive windows, but what you can do is actually just add like a cube in here, um, scale that up kind of over the entire thing, bring it in a little bit, and then just kind of morph that cube into the shape of the building, put the window lights material on that one, and then just unwrap it with a cube projection. And you can basically light up any building you want using this technique here by just putting this inside of that. And then most building models you download, including these ones here, will have a, that window, you know, metallic glass material with uh, the alpha turned down, or in this case, it's just getting mixed with the transparent, which is the same thing. And that will let anything that's below it shine through. So that's also a lot of what's happening here is just my models I've made from other renders or other projects just with this building window set up and then that's just getting duplicated as many times as it needs to be. So I'll leave a download link to this below, this free buildings pack. So it comes with all these different buildings in here and uh, this, including this one here, just some basic brutalist buildings. Um, so yeah, if you want that, it's a free pack. I'll just link it below. Okay, next let's talk about layering on all these different advertisements and neon signs and just glowing stuff everywhere. So, so I'll show you some tricks to make this a lot easier because I struggle with getting these in the render for a long time. So if we look at, uh, just let's just take one of these for example, so I'll just take a little chunk of this and I'll just isolate this and I'll just try and show you what's happening here. If I just turn on the background strength just so you can see a little bit of what's going on here as well. What I'm going to show you here is the same method that is being used on pretty much every neon sign or advertisement in the rest of the render. Not all of them, but like 80% of them are following this kind of structure here. So what this is, is it's just a plane and then you just drag in an image of some sort of advertisement. So I'll show you where to get them in a second, but it's in this case, this is a stock photo from Unsplash of just a, a busy street in Japan somewhere. So if you can find an image like this, I will also try to link this exact one below. If you can find an image like this that just has a shitload of advertisements in it already, you can basically get like at least 20 or 30 different neon signs for your render out of the same image and just duplicate it, switch the UV map around a little bit, move it to a different sign, duplicate, switch it, duplicate, switch. And you can repeat that um, a lot with an image like this. And that makes it a lot easier to work with. In this case, I'm just having a big conglomerate of all of them in a big cluster, but um, and I've also turned on simplify, so it's a little bit blurry in the viewport, but it's, it's sharper in the render. So let's talk about this shader here. So it's a little bit of a mess here, but what's happening is we're taking this image, this one, we're running that into two places again, the emission color and the alpha. So the emission color is self-explanatory. It's just 
the the color of whatever is being emitted so if instead of having a solid color we're using the image as the color the strength is turned up to a seven which is a value that i found was just not too bright but not too low it's bright but not too bright and then what we're doing is we're running this image into the alpha so what that's doing is again it's making the dark parts of this image see-through and it's keeping the light parts visible so that's what's happening here and then we're mixing in a wave texture which is giving this like uh sci-fi wave look hologram look whatever you want to call it to it the way i'm mixing it in is just with a mix color node so anytime you want to combine two different textures so right now we just have the image going into the alpha but i want to bring in the wave texture which looks like this the way i'll do it is we have um our first texture going into the alpha we can just take a mix color node drop that in first of all the, the image is going to be going into slot a when you drop it in i'll drag our second texture or image or whatever into slot b so they're both in there now instead of having it on mix i'm going to switch it over to multiply and that's just going to be a much better way to blend these two things and then i'm just i'm going to crank it up to full so that way we're getting input in the alpha equally from uh from this image here plus the wave texture and they're being blended together in a way that is just going to make more sense uh, so that only the dark parts get combined into one output so then you can just duplicate this thing as much as you want go into edit mode go into the uv editor down here or wherever and then just drag that to any part of this image um, i'm going to turn off simplify which is reducing the texture resolution in the viewport so i'll just turn that off for a second there we go you can see you can zoom in pretty far and get a decent result and then you could just duplicate move this to a different part of this uv map scale it around however you want you can turn on correct face attributes in edit mode and that lets you do uh, this without stretching out the texture and then you can basically just get as many neon signs in a row as you need if you can find a, an image that has a bunch of these in it so that is the technique that I'm using for almost all neon signs in here. And then there's a few other ones that I'm doing with like some holograms and stuff with models. There's a few other ones with like a, a billboard with just spotlights and text on it. Um, so I'm, I'm using some variations, but for the most part, that's the method that I just showed there. I also just want to quickly show you the camera angle here because it's kind of interesting what's happening with that. So just so you can kind of see what's going on here is the general scale of the entire scene. So the buildings are quite massive in this one and everything else is pretty, everything else is roughly to scale so the stairs are the size of stairs the buildings are the size of buildings as you can see the camera is pointed quite upwards we're zoomed out to 30 around 30 millimeters 29 millimeters and we're looking up like if we look at the horizon out there that's kind of like this is kind of looking head on we're the, the camera angle is looking at like quite an upwards extreme angle like this and that's helping a lot with making it feel like just you know an overwhelming kind of perspective like a uh, you know making the buildings feel a bit more massive and just overpowering so i love low angles like this it just makes it feel so cool so that's how upwards the camera is pointed and then um here is if i just go to render view so you can see this our focal length is zoomed out a little bit too so it's a little bit wide angle not crazy wide but the default focal length in blender is 50 millimeters when you spawn in a camera so that's what that looks like and then I've just zoomed it out to 29 millimeters right here. And I found that was a good spot for this. Just so you know as well, I have full guided walkthroughs of these sci-fi and cyberpunk renders right here. So if you like you know, more long form tutorials of me just making something and explaining everything as I'm going along and trying to make it as easy to follow as possible, this would be the place to find those. Like I said too, I used to really struggle with you know urban and sci-fi renders. And it took me a few years of just experimentation and trial and error and just trying to make as many of these as I can to get to a point where I'm actually really happy with them now. And so if you want everything that I've learned in that time about making sci-fi renders and just how to make it as easy as possible to make these kinds of things, plus tons of sci-fi assets and 3D models that I use in my own work, go and check out the Cyber Environments course below. If you watch this channel, I highly recommend you at least go and check that out. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this one. That's how I'm doing the camera angle. The, all the neon signs and advertisements and all the buildings and building window lights as well. So I hope you found that helpful and learned some things. So yeah, that's it for this one. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in some other video.